family, I am here with Cheryl Luckett and I'm excited because God has already been doing some amazing things in our conversation with one another. I'm just so grateful to be able to be in your space. It is beautiful. Thank you. Oh my, I want to come home with you all the time. <laughs> but we are here talking about living your dreams and also, of course, we're going to have a light bulb moment by Cheryl. But we just want to welcome you. Thank you. Welcome you to this to, to this forum, I guess. And um, just wanted to say... God bless you for all of the things that you are doing Thank you. and for what you want to share or what he's leading you to share yep. as it pertains to living your dream because indeed you are living your dream. I am. All right. Tell us about that though. Tell us about how you started living your dream. I think there were, there were early signs uh -huh. that I was a creative. Mm -hmm. Um, even as a child, I loved my room. You know, I had yellow and green wallpaper and mm -hmm. lace on the drapery. I mean, I love that space. Yeah. And then when I got to college, I had the room that they would tour prospective students through. So it was, it was literally <laughs> like house hunters before house hunters. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the dorm director would call and say, hey, Cheryl, we got somebody coming at 10. And I was like, oh, no, I'll have it ready. And I'd have soft music playing wow. and the bed made. So, I mean, there were really early signs that this was, was probably my, my calling. Wow. Um, I ignore those. Mm -hmm. um, I think because, you know, you, you want to choose a career that's conventional where you're going to have prestige stability. Yes. Um, and I went that route. And it wasn't until about 2008, um, mm -hmm. I was actually at church in a track, a Sunday school track class, mm -hmm. where we studied um, The Purpose Driven Life right. by Rick Warren. Mm -hmm. And in that class, I think I started to question whether I was really tapping into God's purpose and calling for wow. my life. And um, like I said, I, I had I always knew that I was a creative and I loved decorating and mm -hmm. I, I had started to nest at home and it was just what I loved to do. It was what I could lose track of time doing. Mm -hmm. And that was actually something that Rick Warren said in that book. And so that was probably the first seed that was planted. Right. Um, and I think it just kind of grew from there. Well, that's amazing because you said several things. You said um, one of the things that we want when we are basically considering living our dream is, you know, that conventional mm -hmm. opportunity where there are perceived comforts, mm -hmm. perceived mm -hmm. meaning they could be mm -hmm. taken away at any time. Absolutely. But you had to make that choice to step away from that. Mm -hmm. I've been reading the book, The Dream Giver, and Bruce Wilkinson talks a lot yep. about stepping outside of that comfort zone right. uh, into a land of unfamiliar. How was mm -hmm. that for you? Did you experience, because you've read the book, mm -hmm. right? I have. So what, what was your experience and how could you relate that book and everything that he pointed out in that book with your experience of living your dream. It, it took me a while to, it was a step-by-step -step process. Okay. So I didn't decide, I'm going to leave my job. Okay. It okay. was, I have this passion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. I'm going to explore this passion. Yeah. I'm going to take a class at the community college. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start a little blog and Ooh. see what happens. And one thing led to another. And mm -hmm. I think what helped me is along the way, God started to confirm. Wow. You know, I'd, I'd take a step and I something great would happen. <laughs> I'd take another step and another door would open. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I must be going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So I think it wasn't, it was something that I had to kind of walk out. Right. Um, and I didn't know until um, several years had passed what the end would be, which would, wow. would be me walking away from my perceived uh, stability. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that in the very beginning, but it became clearer and clearer as I followed him. Wow, 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 wow. Step, moment mm -hmm. by moment. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just all at one time. Yeah. Yep. You had to put your foot in the water, right. so to speak, right. to see it. That is amazing. Yep. That is amazing. So tell me, how, you're, I was reading on your website mm -hmm. that you believe in not only decorating rooms that are beautiful, mm -hmm. but functional. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that means to you and why is that of importance? Um, I think, you know, home is, is where you start every day. Mm -hmm. It's where you finish every day. Um, when you think about it, it's where your fam, your kids grow up. If you've mm -hmm. got children, it's where you entertain family right. and friends, where you make make memories. Mm -hmm. That that place should be a haven. Yeah. Um, it it can't just be pretty. You know, if you can't, you don't feel comfortable in it. If I got a sofa that's lovely, but I don't want to sit on it, or I'm afraid I'm going to mess something up. Right. Then that that doesn't that that's not nourishing. To right. Me. Doesn't right. doesn't help 
uh, my well-being. Mm -hmm. But if I've got a place that's kind of enveloping and mm -hmm. that's functional where I have places to work and places to uh, relax and a, a place to sleep and a place to dine and entertain, mm -hmm. then that, that helps to to create a life um, that's full and rich. Mm -hmm. And I think life really is lived at home. And so that place should be that place if nothing else is. Yeah, and when we were having our conversation, we were talking about calling, you know, and mm -hmm. how did, what was that a challenge for you? Did you really feel as though this was something that God was calling you to do and is calling you to do and that you're able to walk out your God-given call in this type of setting? Tell us more about that and what what gave you the peace with receiving that indeed this is a call. Right. So I struggled in the very beginning, mm -hmm. um, I'll be honest. Um I didn't quite think that interior design was noble enough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't feeding the homeless. I wow. wasn't on the global mission field. Yeah. Um, I could even reconcile with my first career nutrition um, as a dietitian. I could reconcile that I was helping people live healthier lives, take right. care of their temples. You know, that sounded like good, something good to do. Mm -hmm. But interior design? Really? <laughs> I mean, Lord, it's, it's pillows and drapery. I mean, right. how is this important work? Um, but it wasn't until I started to see how what I was doing was impacting the lives of my clients. Wow. Um, wow. How they were, they were spending more time at home mm -hmm. and they were inviting people in. And mm -hmm. there just was an ease that what maybe wasn't there before. And I'm like, this is, this is kind of important. Mm -hmm. Like, what I'm doing is important. This, I'm changing people's lives. Wow. You know, I did several kids' rooms in the beginning and I started to think, hmm, how is this going to impact that, that teenager or that preteen that they now have a space that's calming, that's comfortable, maybe where they can study, where, where they'll, their grades improve, wow. you know, will they get better rest, mm -hmm. um, will they want to invite friends over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think home is so important um, that this work really is, it's ministry. It is ministry, absolutely, because when you think about families being at home together more mm -hmm. because they love mm -hmm. their home, mm -hmm. spending time together, we need to see more of that. Yeah. And so I guess for those individuals that are struggling with what it is that God has called them to do, that's a beautiful illustration that it might not seem like noble work, right. but if you tap into it and if you, you press into it in, long enough, mm -hmm. God will show you how he could use even mm -hmm. that for mm -hmm. his glory. Yep. You know, so there's great work. There are people that's called to work in the church. There are people that are called. That's in right. the Bible sure. to work in the church. And everybody has a call. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are all equipped as Christians to go out yep. and be salt and be light. And that means within any type of marketplace. So right. you are operating in that and that is something to just give God praise for and I know that probably is freeing to someone that's saying is this mm -hmm. noble enough mm -hmm. like you said mm -hmm. is this a, a noble enough position to mm -hmm. say yes and to know mm -hmm. that God could use my life in this area yeah yeah and so we also discussed um several things as it pertains to your space your functional space or your space with God. Mm -hmm. You are creative. So tell us what your time with God looks like or what a space for you is. Is it one space, mm -hmm. all spaces? I mean, how, how does that work for you? So um, I try and have a quiet time with, with the Lord in the mornings. And I like to have different spaces mm, um, to good. spend that time. Mm -hmm. um, so in each room, just about every room, I try and have a little corner um, that's got a comfortable seat, a you know, mm -hmm. little side table next to it. Mm -hmm. um, and it changes. If it's a sunny day, I want to be in the bay window in my kitchen. Oh, nice. um, <laughs> you know, looking out, hearing the birds chirp. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's winter time, I want to be in the living room next to the fireplace with a blanket. You know, nice. so I'm creating those little nooks where I can. Um, so it's not always the same place. Right. Um, but, you know, it, the, what is consistent is that the love, there's a level of comfort there. There's a level of comfort, and it's great intentionality. Yes. Like, you have literally, I, I'm in this house, y'all. It is amazing. <laughs> but you have literally created those spaces so that when, if you decide to go sit in the family room mm -hmm. or in your kitchen, mm -hmm. it's already there. It's right. not something that you yep. have to just kind of conjure up. Yep. And so that's beautiful, that intentionality. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. intentionality. Is there anything that you would like to say to those that are struggling with you know where they are and living their dream mm -hmm. um you know I think well number one you don't have to see the end God knows the end mm -hmm. just take the step you know follow mm -hmm. me I didn't I didn't know I couldn't quite 
I'd swallow leaving my corporate job of 15 wow. years, but he Ooh. got me there. It yeah. took five years from start to, to me walking out of the door. Mm -hmm. um, and during the course of that five years, I just said, you know what, Lord, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to take this step, and then I'm going to wow. trust you. I'm going to take this step, and I'm going to trust you. And so I, I would say if there's something that you feel in your heart is, mm -hmm. is a call from God, just trust him. Wow. Little by little, inch by inch, um, and, you know, he will blow your mind. He will blow your mind. I mean, she is live, literally living out her dream right now. And you started in January. So thank you for sharing that. And now we are getting ready to yep. hear this light bulb. So go ahead. Sharon. Ready? Mm -hmm. So um, I love gardening in addition mm -hmm. to interior design. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of therapeutic for me. I like digging in the dirt. Um, well, a few weeks ago, I went to a local big box store and I got some clearance plants mm -hmm. to plant mm -hmm. in my garden. And was all excited, and I drove home, you know, couldn't get home quick enough to get them in the ground and get them planted. And, you know, some of them needed a little TLC because they were on clearance. Yeah. Well, um, I got them all in the ground except mm -hmm. for one. I ran out of places to put them. I didn't have any more spots in the ground that were suitable. I didn't have any more planters. So I, I set the last one on the potting bench. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll, you know, I'll get a planter later. I, I You know, I need to move on. So... Day after day went by, week turned into two weeks, and mm -hmm. I've watched that plant now for about three and a half weeks, and it is on the verge of death. <laughs> because because on the days when it's really sunny, mm -hmm. that plant looks like it is about to wither and die from mm -hmm. drought, because it's not planted. It's not connected to its source. Um, it's wow. not able to draw <laughs> nutrients. Um, wow. On the days when it's windy, we had a, a, a bad storm the other day, and I walked outside, and the plant was halfway down the yard. It had mm. rolled off the plotting bench. And it dawned on me at that moment, how much is that like us mm. when we are not plugged in, when we're not rooted and planted, and, and maybe in a church or, Ooh, or studying um, or praying, having a regular uh, prayer life. We are tossed to and fro, mm -hmm. you know, we're with, about to wither on the verge of, of drought. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just so important. There's so many lessons in gardening, but mm -hmm. I think that one for me stood, stood out because it said, no matter what, I got to stay connected. Wow. Woo. Yeah. Stay <laughs> connected. And I love how you just said, like, even within your church or within a community, mm -hmm. period, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of your story has a lot to do with that community, yeah, with does. the church community, with those seeds being planted, with people continuing to say, hey, you might want to consider this or mm -hmm. praying for you mm -hmm. and things of that sort. So it is so important that we stay connected to the source. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm sure that's what you're doing with your company. Like you are not losing sight yep. of what it's really about and who it's really about, absolutely. but you are staying connected to the source. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sheriff, for being here You're today. Welcome. Did you have any last words for those that are watching? Um, don't overlook the the value of creating a home that you love to come home to. Wow. I think it's just soul enriching and mm -hmm. I see it sometimes with my clients. It's the last thing we think about, you know. Wow. If, if it's nothing more than painting a wall mm -hmm. a color that makes you feel good, mm -hmm. don't overlook the power of that. Mm -hmm. And God is in that too. Yeah, he is. God <laughs> is in that too. So we praise God for you. We praise God for you and the work that thank you're you. doing. And you as well. Oh, well, praise. Well, thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, and, and we're just going to sign off right now, but we will see you next week. We love you. God loves you more. And we look forward to next Wednesday. We got a whole lot going on next Wednesday. I'll talk about that probably three days from now. And we love you. Stay connected to the source. Stay connected in community. And we will see you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>